love, 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 love. We all want love. Of course we do. We want love, right? We want to be in love. We want to be loved. We want to be love. We want love. We want love. Maybe you don't want love. I want love. I think that's that's a normal human characteristic, desire, hunger to be loved, to know that we are lovable, and to love another, to share our hearts, to share our feelings, to share our life with that special someone. And as you guys know, lately I have been posting and sharing a lot of my personal world and things that are going on in the love category and just, you know, some of the yummy juiciness of, of my intimate life. And you might have picked up that I may be a little head over heels for my guy. And it's a beautiful thing, is it not? To really feel that connection, that spark, that depth, that I don't want to share a moment without him with any, you know, with life. I want, I want, ever, I want the depth. I want the juiciness every single moment of my life. I just told him yesterday, matter of fact, I told him, I said, I have a conversation with you all day long. You know, I'm writing an article and I'm talking to him. I'm doing conscious coffee and he's right here with me, even though he's at work. No matter what it is that I'm doing in the day, I feel as though there is this deep connection there. There is this silent stream of consciousness pouring between us. And it is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Now we get little snippets of this in life, right? And a lot of the stuff that I've written lately has been talking about more of a soulmate-based relationship or that really primary significant other and what does that mean, right? And, and how do we have that? What is that? What, how, do we, how do we get that good shit in our life, in our intimate life, in our bed? in our heart, that life picture. And then I, I was just thinking back just this morning, we were having our morning coffee like we do every single morning and just sitting there and talking about different things. And I, I looked at him and I said, oh, this is a great topic because this topic that I'm bringing to you today around, I want, I want the lover, really I do, I do. And I want a damn good one. Right? Well, number one, we have to define what a damn good lover, partner, significant other is to us. What is that? Now, that definition is going to come from our past experiences. It's going to be defined by the things that we know that we don't want because we've experienced them in so many different ways. Right? So we go, oh. That was a contrast that I didn't like. That wasn't fun. That wasn't, oh, uh, I didn't like the way the per that person did this. I didn't like the way that person did that. I know that I don't want, you know what? I don't want an alcoholic. I don't want somebody too codependent. I don't want a narcissist. I don't want, you know, I, 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 need, I need certain check boxes in my love relationship. Checked. And then the positive side, not the negative side, right? So we learn from our relationships what we want and what we don't want. Now, we tend to run around in fear and we tend to go, oh, I don't want that. So I'm going to focus in on, do you have that stuff that I don't want? And in our focusing of, do you have that stuff that I don't want? What we find is that a lot of people have that stuff. Why is that? Well, because we're focusing on because that's what we're looking for. And so since we are looking for it, well, that's what we find, right? That's exactly what we find, because that's what we're looking for. We're not looking for the good shit. We're not looking for the things that we really, really want, the box checks that we're like, yeah, fuck yes, that's what I want. No, we don't do that. We look for the box checks that we don't want. So number one, number one to, I want the lover, and I want a damn good one, really I do, is to define what you are looking for. And then number two of that, the subcategory of it is 
Focus on what you want, not on what you don't want. Okay, so that's, that's the easy part. That's the very simple, easy part, right? Make your list, check it twice. Focus on what you want. Don't focus on what you don't want. Well, it's still not showing up. It's still not there. Why? Why is it still not coming in? Why do I still not see Mr. and Mrs. Right perfect? Where is that soulmate relationship for me? Where's my twin flame? Where's the person that I feel like I've shared a thousand lifetimes with that bursts my heart open and has me wanting to communicate 24 seven at an energetic level where I feel like we're so vibing right there. I can't look past this person. I'm not willing to let anything or anyone come between us because we are so united and we feel so strong. So we want that kind of relationship, but what prevents us from actually finding it? Well, a few years back, you may have, if you've been following me for the last five years, for those of you who haven't been following me for the last five years, well, go back, there's some good shit back there. Conscious copies, articles, all that good stuff. But five years ago, I was in a beautiful relationship. I was in an open relationship back then. Now I'm in a monogamous relationship and loving it. Absolutely loving it. Can't imagine anything different. But back then I was in an open relationship and I was exploring open relationship and playing and different things like that. And I was learning about myself and I was learning boundaries and I was learning about my heart and about different, just everything, relationships, self, sex, communication. I was, in, I was just, I was in, I was a sponge to relationship. And so five years ago, I had two men in my life, two primary relationships, you could call them, because I didn't make either one of them secondary. But the, the heart-centered one, the one that had me just bursting in love every single time we, we were together. We traveled the world together. We shared beautiful, intimate conversations, spiritual conversations, energetic events, connections, beautiful lovemaking, of course. He would manage to always just fuck me open to the universe and taught me so much about me. Well, I could not see how anything could ever be as great as that, right? And we were so bonded. And then one day, about three and a half years ago, three, three and a half years ago, whatever it's been now, we went to a beautiful romantic trip. He whisked me away. It was like, you know, a pretty woman moment where I got blindfolded in the airport and taken on this romantic trip and everything was perfect. Everything was absolutely perfect. And we had a scrumptious, yummy week that I never wanted to let go of. Never ever did I want to let go of it. And we came back and 24 hours later, the whole world had shifted. The whole world had shifted. And my heart, 90 days later, was shattered. Over the course of that summer, everything that I didn't want to have happen, happened. And it sent me into an emotional spiral where my emotional armor came up and I felt like I could never trust the masculine again and that I would never be able to have this depth again. Nor did I want to open up here to it because that fucking hurts. It hurts so bad. And so I drew in other relationships and I knew, I knew that I was broken in this category. I knew that I was hurting in this category. I knew that my trust factor in self and in the masculine was not there, was not strong. But I also knew that I wanted relationship and I wanted connection, I wanted sex, I wanted dates, I wanted travel, I wanted a partner in, in crime, you could say, to kind of adventure. I knew that I wanted play in multiple ways. Everything that the masculine could provide. I didn't want to just bounce around life completely alone. 
And I've always been an advocate to go date. There's no reason to not date. You don't have to get into a serious relationship. Go date, explore, learn, learn about self, learn about others, learn what you want, learn what you don't want. And so I went and I did that myself. Well, back to the drawing board we go. Even though I'm still learning here and I'm still wounded here, I'm gonna go back to that drawing board and I'm not going to shut my shit down. I'm going to keep it going. I'm going to keep my energy moving in relationship, in potential love. I'm going to cast those nets. Just not going to catch any of the fish in those nets. And so that's what I did. And I drew into my relationship, of course, a wounded person because I was wounded and wah, da, 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 da. And here we go down a three year path of learning, healing, understanding. But you know what I did over that two, two and a half years of the three, three and a half year relationship? Do you know what I did? And here's why. And this is why for all of you people out there who's maybe in a relationship, been in a relationship, you know, a while you're dating, you're not finding the person that, that you're really wanting. You're not finding that soul connection. You're like, why, why, why can't I find Mr. or Mrs. White? Why can't I find my, my, my perfect match, my other, where is he or she, right? And you're wondering where it is. And here's the God's honest truth. You are clinging in this false loyalty to a love of the past. You are clinging to an idea, to a, to a fantasy of something that is no more or could never be or never was, but you've got it up here and you've lodged it right here and you can't get past that fucking vision. You can't get past that feeling and you're holding on with all your might to that idea. And as long as you're holding on to that idea, you're having a relationship with the idea. That idea is your primary relationship and nothing else can get in there. You have zero space for your soulmate. You have zero space for for a beautiful fucking relationship that's going to bring you to that next level of relating, that next level of you, that's gonna birth you into a higher frequency for a relationship. You can't have it. You cannot have it as long as you're clinging to this concept of something else. You have to get right where you're at. You have to heal those wounds. You gotta let go. You have to let go. And it's scary as fuck to let go of things that we hold beautiful, that we hold so close to us because we're afraid that we're going to lose them in some way. Well, I had a beautiful eight year relationship with that man that I lost back then. The man that broke me, shattered me. Eight year beauty. Nothing that I can say ill, nothing but love toward that relationship and to him, still today. Matter of fact, there is massive gratitude to the relationship, to everything learned and gained in it for self and the expansion, the understanding, right? That's what you have to get to. You have to understand, this is what I learned from it. This is who I am. This is where I'm at. And you have to be willing to let it go from here. You're never going to lose it from here. But as long as you're running around and you're holding and you're thinking and you're clinging and you just got this fucking loyalty because that's what we think. I was just talking to somebody about this just, just the other day, the loyalty that they had to an old partner, their old love and that they were so, and then it's just like, she was my soulmate. She was the one, she was my one love of this lifetime. I know what I had and she's gone. Now, well, they might be gone or they might be right in front of your face still, but the relationship has changed. Maybe, maybe you're now friends. Maybe you see each other because you share kids. May, you know, whatever it is, realize that 
whether this person that you're hung up on or the idea of the person that you're hung up on and the relationship that you're hung up on, maybe they're right in front of your face, maybe they're not, maybe they're gone, maybe, maybe they passed away, maybe they've moved on to another relationship, maybe you see them once a week, maybe you don't see them at all. No matter what, if you're clinging to the concept of that person being your ideal or that that person is holding your love, your worthiness, your that, that, that they owe you anything or that, oh, I can never have that. I'm not finding it anywhere else because you've attached their picture to everything. Well, guess what? You're never going to find it. You're never going to open to it because that cling that you have toward that other person and that idea to that love, you are dishonoring yourself and you're dishonoring that love. You're dishonoring that relationship and you are making it impossible for you to ever have to call in exactly what you're saying that you want. So you can define exactly what you want all damn day long. You can make the lists, you can have the boxes, you can you can do the work that you think that you need to do on you. You can have the perfect body, the perfect attitude. You can go on 50,000 dates or none. And either way you look at it, the only thing that will come, as long as you are in that clean energy, is a big fat zero. Now you might end up in a relationship that's going to be fleeting. It's going to be empty. It's not going to serve you and what you're wanting. If you really truly want that primary partner, that significant other, that match made in heaven, that soulmate, then what you've got to do is you've got to get right with your past. You've got to get right with that love. You've got to get right with your heart and you've got to let that go. You gotta put it down. Know that it is still there, that it taught you everything that you need to know for that next level of love, that next relationship. And then you've gotta want the love more than you want to hold on to what you no longer have. So there you go. That's my words of past experience, understanding, and how I think I got to where I'm at today. This is what I feel at least, because I had this realization and I was telling, I was telling my guy about it this morning. I was like, you know, it wasn't until, you know, I said, because, because him and I, we missed each other. We've probably missed each other through the course of the last 20 years, numerous times, funny enough, because we lived not blocks away from each other in the past in another state. We went to the same coffee shops and the same grocery stores. We frequented the same areas. Weird, beautiful, trippy. We were both not ready for each other, but we were right there. And then over the course of the last, get this, three years, we frequented each other and we missed each other completely missed each other to the point that I blocked him out of my mind. It was armor. So what shifted? What changed? What made it where I could suddenly see and he could suddenly see and the armor went down? Well, you see a common of relationship is a two-way street. Relationship is a two-way energy. Relationship is a two-way dropping down the armor. We can run into that perfect match that perfect person out there and if their armor is up and blocking us then we can dance around and do everything and be perfect and they're not going to see us and vice versa is true for them they can bounce around and be perfect and if our armor is up then we're not going to see them and that armor comes from having our focus our attention on fear on the belief structure that we're not good enough or we're too much, we're not worthy, we're not lovable, we're not whatever. And oh, 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 but I had this. I had this. I want this. And as long as we're turned to that, we're not going to see that. And that's what I realized this morning as I was sitting there drinking my coffee with him. That about 
a year and a half ago. I let go of that. I let it go. I set it down. I got right with it. And I didn't need to cling anymore to the loyalty of that love, which was false loyalty because, because true loyalty is love. True loyalty is honor. And if we really are in that loving relationship, if it really was all that, then what does our soul and that other person's soul say? Go live. Go love. Go expand. Experience. Grow. And so I finally, about a year and a half ago, put my armor down. And you know what I found? I found a man. I found a man that I went, oh, he scares me. He scares me. Oh, shit. And you know what? He felt something on the other side, too, because he was putting down his armor that he was carrying. And I was putting down my armor that I was carrying. And all of a sudden... We saw each other. Now the course of time grew that. And then all of a sudden armor just shattered. And there we are. Well, I'm telling you that if you're holding on to something and you're looking at it, but you're wanting something else. You're looking at this, but you're like, but I want the lover. I want a damn good one. I want the lover in my bed. I want the holding of the hands. I want the connection. I want the unity. I want the support. I want to know. I, 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 I. Well, you got to put down your army. You got to turn toward what you want. And realize that that person out there, chances are your ideal, that person that you're really going to take that next level of life, of relationship with, they're probably putting it down too. So it is a two-way street. You have to activate your side and walk in faith that they're going to do the same. And that the universe, God, is going to bring you together in the perfect time. So what are you going to choose to look at? What are you going to put your focus on? That's the question of the day. You're out there looking for love. All the single ladies, all the single men. You're out there looking for love. Or maybe you're in a relationship and you just really fucking hate it. Because you know it's not in alignment. You've outgrown it. It's no good for you anymore. And now you're ready to make a change. Well, know that you have to drop this. You have to turn away from those ideas, concepts, energies. Love yourself enough and love that relationship enough to put it the fuck down. And to turn toward your claim, what you're claiming you want. If you want to know more about that, of course, guess what? That's what Unavailable for Bullshit's about, part of it. It's my eight pillars of understanding and creating the, the focus, the programs, the patterns, the thought processes, the emotions, learning what you need to learn to develop love, money, life, happiness. And what are the things that we want? Love, money, life, happiness, right? Well, that's what unavailable for bullshit's all about. It's going to be eight weeks of intensive, intensive coaching. You get one-on-one -on -one with me. There's no group activity here. Okay. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Click on the link in the comment section. It's limited to 15 people. And for all you single ladies in the house, if you really just want to like really crank this out, well, at the end of this month, March 26th, I believe it is, I am running a whole workshop on how to manifest your man. So the principles I'm teaching here that I share with you, little tidbits, we're going to go deep. We're really going to go deep. I'm going to help you ladies really get in there and create the energy, drop the armor, really clarify what you want, what a conscious man means to you. What does that guy look like? Not just physically. What does he energetically look like? Manifest your man. For all you single ladies out there, or ladies who are thinking about becoming single, I hate to put it out there, but I know that a lot of people are right there in the cusp of it. We'll figure out what is in alignment and what is not. Join me March 26th for that. Everybody else, grab a hold of the unavailable for bullshit. If you're just sick and tired of your own bullshit, the thoughts in your head, yeah, that repetitive thinking that keeps you right exactly where you're at, 
wonder why things aren't changing is probably because you're thinking the same thoughts over and over and expecting to get different results. Sheer craziness, right? It's a bunch of bullshit is what it is. So stop taking it from yourself and the world around you. Know that you're worthy of love, that you're worthy of calling in that dynamic relationship. You're worthy of it all. If you're wanting for it, well, it's out there for you. God doesn't put those little eggs in your head of desire for things that you can't have. They're there because they're there for you. You're supposed to want and you're supposed to go toward. But how do you get to it? That's the question. Remember, stop existing. Start living. Know that you are worthy. And I'll catch you tomorrow with another Conscious Coffee. Love you guys.